So, Joseph, we're reaching towards the end of this saga involving Banco Espiritu Santo, the large Portuguese bank. A, uh, a solution, a resolution over the weekend will split the bank into two, a, a good bank and a, a bad bank. Now, is this a, a bail-in or a bail-out or both or neither? I would hesitate. I would say both because there is clearly taxpayer money going in. There'll be an almost €5 billion euro loan to a resolution fund, which is sort of owned by Portuguese banks, which will then supply the equity to the new BES. Um, I mean, the, the, the taxpayer exposure gets further removed the longer this goes on. I mean, the, the banks ultimately have to repay the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So that's the bailout part. The bail-in bit is more interesting because the definition of a bailout of, of a bail-in, sorry, um, is usually your claims as a as a creditor just get reduced overnight, um, and that's that, and you're and you're burned. Here it's slightly different. Uh, the equity and the junior debt of beds are taking a big hit, but it's because they are actually being stranded, marooned, however you want to call it, in old beds, which will become this bad bank. And rather than taking an outright loss, they have to sort of wait and see what losses come from the exposure which has gone over with them into old beds, which is basically what's been causing the problems. Uh, it's intergroup exposure and exposure to its Angogan subsidiary. And are they likely to get anything back from that exposure, these the equity holders and subordinated debt holders? Is there any hope that they might, might get anything back? Well, leave the equity to one side for a moment, which is maybe a good idea because it looks like they're going to get zeroed. The sub debt is interesting because that's not trading at zero, that's trading about 20 cents in the euro uh, today. Uh, there's not very much of it though, there's about 1 billion euros of liability which is going over into this bad bank. And if you look at the assets which are going into old bears at the same time, there's no full balance sheet yet, and so it's hard to do an evaluation of them. Mm. But when you add up the group exposures, the Angolan stake, other bits and bobs, and you sort of throw in some impairments, it looks like there's about a billion or so euros of assets going in. So it's going to be cutting it very, very close if you're looking for a recovery on the sub debt. And how does this play into the sort of bigger picture? If you take a, st a step back and look at a, an isolated example of a, a European bank resolution, is this how we might expect all future bank resolutions to go, or is this a, an idiosyncratic example as all the others have been? I think you know, if you're the European Central Bank or you know, in the European Commission, you're going to hope it goes like this because it, it's been very swift, and there have been no systemic. Results actually, you know, like Portuguese government bonds rallied today, and so did you know, the wider Portuguese stock market, which is not what you expected in the depths of the eurozone crisis two years ago. But from the perspective of a bank creditor or shareholder, um, you knew that there was a target painted on your back if it came to a distress situation, and that bailing was the way forward. You probably did not know that you could be reassigned at will between bad banks and good banks. And so you have to bear in mind because that's you know, the source of the losses here. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems then that uh, bank resolution is still, a, to a certain extent, a question of make it up as you go along. Joseph, thanks very much.